Around the year 1000, Amstel land, where now this city stands, was barren countryside. There was a lake called Balmamir, and there were waterways known today as the River Amstel and the Eye. In the 12th century, huge floods swamped much of the countryside. So in around 1200, the people living in Holland started building dams and dikes. These formed a protection against the ever-present threat from the waters of the sea. The earliest time the name Amstelladamme has been found is in 1270. It means the dam on the river Amstel. In 1275, Count Floris of Holland, the local lord, granted the people of Amstelladamme the right to levy taxes. Soon, the small town was expanding rapidly. By 1380, the young city was already quite a size. It consisted of many waterways crisscrossed with streets. But soon, the city was bursting at the seams. It had to be expanded. In around 1450, a waterway enclosed the city like a moat. This was today's single canal as far as the Mint Tower and in the other direction out towards the waters of the Eye. The next big extension came in 1597, when a new city wall was built where today the Hierenkracht, or Gentleman's Canal, runs. But the population just went on growing. Also, there were now many wealthy merchants who wanted grand houses in the city. So in 1612, two new canals were constructed, forming arcs outside the old single canal. Looping round the outside of these came a new single or girdle canal. This construction became what today is known as the Amsterdam Ring of Canals. The second section of the Ring of Canals was built after 1658. Then the waterways were extended from Leitzekracht down to the river Amstel and further east towards the Eye. During the 18th century there were no extensions. The city remained enclosed within the 17th century canal girdle, which today is the streets running along the edge of a waterway, namely Nassaukade, Stadthalderskade and Maritzkade. But big changes came with the 19th century in and around Amsterdam. Among other things, the lake of Haarlemmermeer was filled in. Around 1860, the city of Amsterdam began to alter its appearance once more. The central park, Vondelpark, still there today, was laid out, and after 1870, new residential suburbs were built beyond the central ring of canals. All the stops were pulled out in the 20th century, and buildings went up at a great rate. Roughly between 1915 and 1940, the architect Berlache implemented Plan South. The architects associated with him won international respect with their challenging ideas about building. In the 1950s, thousands of new dwellings went up in the so-called garden suburbs, places like Sloterplas. The airport at Schiphol also formed part of this building plan, initiated in the 1930s. It was known as the General Extension Plan for Amsterdam. Then, in 1966, a large section to the southeast of Amsterdam was incorporated into the city. This was the Bijlmermeer polder, which centuries before had been a lake. The intention was to create an ideal residential suburb in the Bijlmer. The city is still growing, and work on its most recent new suburb, called Eiberg, was begun in the 1990s with the actual creation of new land to carry Amsterdam's growth into yet another century.